Hello and welcome to a tutorial about how to set up FFmpeg on Windows. Now, for those who aren't aware, FFmpeg is a very powerful video manipulation program with which you can record videos, process them, apply effects, stream them over the internet, play them back, and so on and so forth. Now, in my opinion, it is the most powerful tool for unacceleratedly manipulating videos on both Windows and Linux, and possibly on many other platforms too. Uh, that is because with this you can configure pretty much every detail of recording or processing a video, from variable bitrate quality, to motion compensation settings, to compression ratios, to specific optimizations, and so on and so forth. Uh, with a correctly configured FFmpeg recording and processing script, you can have high quality, high definition, high compression, good frame rate videos ready in just a few key presses. Also, don't forget that FFmpeg is a free and open source project from which anyone can benefit and anyone can participate in. Now that said, FFmpeg is what people would normally consider to be an expert tool. It's a command line interface program, and getting used to that may take a while. Also, finding good settings that work for you is a rather time-consuming task, and you should make sure to read the FFmpeg manual or the documentation, in order to understand how the program actually works. You will also need additional resources on the internet to understand some of the more complex terminology, if you're new to all of this, as well as to find out what extra parameters some codecs allow you to use, in order to utilize the program's full potential. And the last but not least, you need some creativity in order to devise new ways of recording or processing videos by chaining commands and writing simple scripts in order to make it easier to use. Now with that out of the way, how do you set up a thumbtag for recording on Windows? Now if you have seen my previous video where I was talking about my recording setup on Linux, you should already know how to get it working there. However, setting it up on Windows is a bit more difficult task, as the primary development platform for FFmpeg is Linux, and, well, Windows itself makes using command line programs more difficult than it should be. Regardless, I will walk you through the process. Uh, everything I do here is done in Windows 7, but the process should be similar on other Windows NT versions as well. Alright, so let's start off by, first of all, getting FFmpeg itself. Uh, now, in order to do that, you need to go to ffmpeg.org. It will bring you to the main FFmpeg uh, page. From there, you go to download. Then, uh, if you want Windows binaries, scroll down to FFmpeg Windows Builds, like that. And here is the download page for the Windows build of FFmpeg. Now there are diff uh, different things that you can choose here. Uh, static builds and shared builds. Basically static builds are FFmpeg in a single program. And shared builds are FFmpeg in uh, different DLL files. Basically, Windows is not very suitable for shared builds, so as this thing says here, if you don't really care about that, pick the static builds. It's easier like that. So, if you have 64-bit operating system, and most of you should probably have that, you need to go to the right side here, uh, select 64-bit builds and choose the latest build. Like that, you will have a thing to download it. Note that it's a 7-zip file. In order to open 7-zip files, you need to download the 7-zip program. Uh, to get that, you need to go to 7-zip.org. And here, the first thing on the page is the download link. Now, 7-zip is a file archiver that is also open source and free to use. As a matter of fact, 7-zip, in my opinion, is so good that it obsoletes uh, other archives such as uh, WinRAR or WinZip. 
Really, I don't see any reason why you should ever use anything else than 7-Zip. It's also very, very similar to WinRAR, so if you are comfortable with that, you will be comfortable with 7-Zip. So when you download it, if you have a 64-bit operating system, download the one for 64-bit. So when you download that, you will get to SourceForge, and then after waiting a bit, you get the thing to download. Uh, proceed to download and install it. Um, it will ask you for escalated privileges if you have UAC turned on. And if you just installed it, make sure to go to Tools, Options, once you launch the uh, program. Then select All and OK in order to associate 7-Zip with all the different archives that you have in order to make it easier for you. So anyway, once you have downloaded FFmpeg, you will be able to open the archive. Uh, where was it? There we go. You will be able to open the archive, then open the folder which is inside the archive, and you need to extract this. Now, you are free to choose where you want to extract it to. Usually what I do is I create a new folder in the C drive, call it FFmpeg, and then just drag and drop everything here. I'm not going to do that right now because I have it already extracted. Because after all, I'm recording this somehow, and of course I'm using FFmpeg to record it. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Once you have everything extracted, uh, you can now test it if it's working properly. Now to do that, you need to press start, go to run. This is not visible from what I'm recording, unfortunately, but yeah. Press start, click run if you can, because I think it's not available on default on Windows 7, but if you cannot, you can Always just enter the letter CMD in the search prompt, and it will give you the link to that there. So anyway, run CMD, which runs the uh, command line prompt. Uh, now, you should probably change a bit of settings for the command prompt here, because the defaults are not very good. Uh, go uh, right-click on the window decoration here, press Properties, go to the Layout tab, and make sure that in the screen buffer size place here, the width is at least somewhat bigger than uh, 80. Usually setting it to something like uh, 90 works, I guess, and make sure that it is set up correctly. Yeah, and now then, once you have that done, you need to uh, go to the directory where you installed FMPEG on. <laughs> well, installed, dragged it. <laughs> uh, so that would be change directory, and you can manually type in, for example, uh, backslash FMPEG, backslash bin, uh, because you into the bin folder within FFmpeg, because that's where the program itself is contained. So once you're there, you can test the program by launching FFmpeg minus version. And if something is shown like that, that means everything is correctly set up. Uh, now in order to record the screen, you need to do something more. Now, if you recall what I was talking about in the video about how I have set things up in Linux, you can remember that I used X11 Grab in order to record the video from uh, uh, Linux. It doesn't work on Windows, however, because it relies on the X server and Windows doesn't use an X server, it uses its own strange server. <laughs> uh, so in order to use that, you need to do something different. 
the way that you record anything on Windows is by using Direct Show, which is a Microsoft standard. Um, now, to get more information about that, you need to go and look at the FFmpeg documentation. I already have it set to the show. If you just go to the documentation, then press the FFmpeg, then you can find the show here, and you will find explanations for every single thing that you can configure with it. And here are some examples. They are very useful, and I am going to use one right now. Uh, what you want to see is what devices are installed on your computer. So, right, ffmpeg minus list devices true minus f d show minus i demi. And now what that means, although it's not exactly said here, is that well ffmpeg is just the program name for it, uh, which you want to ex execute, then list devices true means that you want to get a listing of all available devices in the system, uh, minus f means format, d show means that you want to interface with direct show, which is already a built-in standard on Windows, and minus i dummy is just because you need to have an input when you have a format, or else if a bank will complain, and then it's just some random input that you can put in. And here you can see different things. Now I have already set everything up, so this will be different from uh, what you normally see when you just install a and tag. Um, normally what you will see is direct show video devices here, and nothing after that. Then direct show audio devices with uh, anything that you have available on Windows. Now if you right click on your speaker configuration uh, icon in the uh, system tray, and then press uh, recording devices, again I cannot show you that because I'm not recording that part of the screen. Yeah. Uh, or, of course, you can also go to that by going to your control panel, and then going to hardware and sound, then going to sound, and you get the same exact place as the other time. So, here uh, you have recording devices, and basically whatever recording devices you have enabled here, you will have them listed here. Um, make sure to set everything up correctly, because, well, if you have something disabled, then it won't be shown here and you won't be able to grab it. Which makes sense, because after all, um, <coughs> Direct Show, after all, interfaces with Windows pretty much directly. So anyway, I have here three things set up. My microphone that I'm using right now what you hear, which is pretty much the stereo mix, and the stereo mix stereo mix. <laughs> uh, but these two are from one sound card, uh, this one is from a different sound card. Well, actually, this is from a sound chip integrated one, because I have an external sound card. Yay. <laughs> anyway, uh, with that, you can already test this out by recording some audio, however, since there are no video devices that Windows provides, you cannot record videos. And that's probably what you want to do. <laughs> so, how to make sure that you can record videos? Well, you'll have to install some additional uh, programs. Now, the thing that you want to install here is called Screen Capture Recorder. Uh, getting to it is a little bit tricky. Uh, you can find it on the internet by searching for it on Google or something. If you want to go to it directly, you have to enter github.com slash rdp slash screen dash capture dash recorded dash two dash video dash windows dash free. 
It was called Shorter earlier, but they decided to change the name to something that is more explanatory about what this is. So you need to enter a longer name there. Or, like I said, search for it on Google or something. Anyway, here is the place where you can find information for it. And this information is actually very important. Now, first of all, installation. Uh, to install the thing, you have to go to this here place, SourceForge, Project Screen Capture Files. Uh, you need to select the latest one. And now, if you look at the backlog here, there are things like 64-bit, device-only, something-something. You don't care about any of them. Since the last revisions, uh, the only thing that doesn't even have any sort of name here is for both 32-bit and 64-bit alike. So you just want to download the latest version. That's it. Once you download it, things like that. Five seconds, yes, no. <laughs> Once you download the thing and you install it, again, it requires administrator privileges. Um, once you install that, you'll get something new in your start menu here. Uh, it is called Screen Capture Recorder, and it again is not on the screen. Actually, can I do that? I think I can do that, yeah. So that's the representation of the start menu. Uh, in Programs, Screen Capture Recorder. And here you have a menu item configure. There are different things here. Uh, the thing that you want to launch is, uh, well, you can launch display current capture settings. But what you actually want to launch in order to configure the thing, uh, because while just installing it allows you to record something, uh, it doesn't allow you to choose the screen region that you want to record, and you definitely want to customize that. And you can do that by, like I said, going to the Start menu, and here you have uh, an item configure by setting specific screen capture numbers. Uh, now, one word of warning. In order to launch that, you have to have Java installed. If you don't have it, nothing will happen if you try to launch that. And just for reference, in, in order to install Java, you need to go to java.com, then free Java download, and things like that. You will have the ability to download Java. Of course, since I already have it installed, it won't let me reinstall it. <laughs> but yeah, you just follow this thing, and you will get that installed. Then, uh, launch the configure by setting capture numbers and stuff. And you will be presented with this sort of uh, box, which, can, uh, which you can use to enter different values into. Uh, first of all, desired capture height. That's uh, the height of your screen capturing. I have set it to 720 in order to uh, make it fit the YouTube 720p uh, preset. So it's, it's okay. Then enter desired capture width. I have it set to 1280 again to conform to YouTube standards. Then start X is the place where you want to start the recording from. Uh, it's the offset. Basically, if you write something like 100, uh, the recording will start from 100 pixels from the top left corner of the screen. And right now I have set it to 0 and start Y set to 0. Uh, then default maximum frames per second. Usually 30 is a good number because that's the highest you can use on YouTube. 
And then stretched width, I'm not sure what that means. You can probably look that up in the source code of this program. Once again, it's open source and free. You can modify it as you wish, and it doesn't cost you anything. So uh, if you leave it blank, it will use the defaults. So if you don't know something, just leave it blank. Uh, this doesn't concern you if you have the previous things set to blank. This, I have no idea what it means, so I still have it set to blank. Now, it says, enter desired to disable arrow for vista plus F1. That means that if you have this set to 1, it will automatically disable the transparency. If you are running this on uh, Windows Vista or Windows 7 or probably Windows 8 as well. Uh, usually it's a good idea to enter 1 here because it really, really takes a lot of resources. Since I think it uses uh, the sync and that lowers the performance of it, so it's better to turn it off. And as you can see from my window decorations, I have it turned off. Right, uh, that again, I don't really know what that is. That, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, desired milliseconds to sleep between pull for dead up E changes. Again, I'm not certain when that is. It's probably a polling um, number. So if you enter something high, you will get less CPU usage, but also less precision or something like that. Again, leave it blank if you don't know anything. Uh, this is Capture Transparent Windows with Mouse Blink Only Non-Arrow F1. I'm not entirely certain what that means, but I think that if Arrow is not enabled, it doesn't matter. Well, not sure. Anyway, once you're done with that, you have the Screen Capture Recorder configured correctly, and you can now s uh, try and record something. So go back to your terminal screen, and if you execute that again, you will find something similar to what I have here. You will now have a new video device, screen capture recorder, and a new audio device, virtual audio capture. Basically, if you have a hardware stereo mixer, I have even two here, from both sound cards, you probably don't want to use the virtual audio capture because it's software only and it uses your CPU instead of your audio card, which probably is not as good as using your audio card directly. So use something else if you can't help it. Um, right, so how do you record them? Uh, oh, and one more thing here. It says that if you install the 64-bit device, you'll need to install the MIS, uh, Microsoft Visual C++ redistributable thing here. You don't really need that, as of recent installers. It will detect things automatically for you, and if you don't have it installed, it will offer you to install it. So don't mind this. Yeah, anyway, uh, here you can find usage, stuff, 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 stuff. Yeah, and in order to record, you need to do something like this. FFmpeg, format the show, input, video, screen capture recorder, uh, desired frame rate, and uh, that's just for 10 seconds of recording, but you don't need that if you want to record it until you want to stop. Uh, so, um, in my case, what I would want to do in order to record my microphone and also the uh, window is to write ffmpeg um, minus fd show minus i video equals. Now, in order to record things correctly, you need to write everything that is exactly as it is shown here. Exactly. 
I'm pretty sure that the case is also important. So you need to write it with correct case. Screen capture recorder. Then if you also want to record audio, you also have to put a column there. Then audio equals and in my case it would be my microphone which is microphone creative sound blaster x5 that then you must configure a frame rate so it will be 30 for me and then uh, select your codecs. You can try out the default one, which is uh, libx264, and probably also want to make things multi-threaded. So thread zero, not threads, threads, <laughs> and then put an output file, something like uh, test dot mkv. And once you press enter, it will record things until you press the Q key to stop the recording. Once again, refer to the official FFmpeg documentation in order to know uh, more about how to use it. Now, one word of warning. For example, if I was to record the game audio by using what you hear here, you can notice that there are quotes within quotes. That is not a valid thing that FFmpeg understands. So, in order to make it work correctly, you have to escape your quotes. So, instead of using something like that, which would be uh, what you hear, creative SB X5. Also, make sure that you write exactly how it is written here. If it's cut off, it's cut off. You need to write it as it is. So, uh, like that, it would be invalid. You don't want that. Instead, you need to escape your quotes by putting a backslash just before one set of quotes. Uh, I think that is valid. Uh, also, perhaps putting it like this is also valid. Uh, you can experiment with that a bit. I know that one of these is definitely valid, perhaps both of them are. So yes, and once you press enter, you will get a screen that is similar to what we have here. That's the current recording session. Uh, normally, you should not have uh, this happening like it is now where you have new lines printed that's just because uh, everything does not fit on a single line and that's why it overrides the last line and basically it creates new lines that's very unfortunate and uh, that happens when the line is too long so once again in order to fix that you need to make sure that the buffer for your command line prompt is high, the width buffer. Something to 90 may be higher if you want to make sure that everything fits. And that way you won't get things like that. Uh, so like I said, if you want to stop, press Q and that will stop the recording. Uh, now I also want to share a few uh, tips and tricks with how to set things up more conveniently. Uh, like I said, in order to run FFmpeg, you have to uh, go to the folder in which you installed it, and that takes a bit of time. So, for example, if I want to go, I wonder, does that work? No, it doesn't. Oh man, Windows command prompt, it's not very easy to use. So if I was to go to say you you users users 
me and then say I want to record something and put the output here. Uh, to do that, if you just enter ffmpeg minus version, you can see that ffmpeg is not recognized as an internal or external command, operable program, or batch file. Uh, whatever will I do? Uh, you have two options here. You can either put the full path here, in which case it would be C, or if I just want to do that, it would be backslash ffmpeg bin version. Yeah, you can do that, or you could do something that makes it work automatically. In order to do that, right-click on your computer, press Properties, and in the system, choose Advanced System Settings. You will be asked to confirm this. If you are using correct uh, security options, you will not be logged in as an administrator, mister, <laughs> and you will have to enter the root password, and then uh, press environmental variables, and here, find path, then press edit, and what you need to do is to add ffmpeg into your path. Uh, these things are separated by a semicolon. So after that, you need to put a semicolon, then write something like C, ffmpeg, bin. Right, okay, okay, okay. And now, if I do this, uh, well, it doesn't work right now because it requires a restart. So you have to restart the thing and then you will be allowed to use a FFmpeg from any uh, path in your computer that you want. Right. Uh, now, there is a, another thing that you might want to keep in mind. Uh, in the Screen Capture Recorder Start menu, you can also find some more tools. Configure by resizing a transparent window. Uh, the thing is that if you want to set specific screen capture numbers, you will have to find out exactly what you want to record. Now, in my case, it wasn't much of an issue because I just uh, placed uh, everything that I want to record in the region that I want to record in and just set the size of the region, which I already know. Uh, however, if you wanted to record something like a game and you didn't want to record the window decorations, for example, you would have to launch this tool, configure by resizing a transparent window. And once again, you have to have Java here. And here we have a tool. Uh, I don't like this tool, to be honest, and uh, what it does is, when you click here, it will automatically resize the thing to what you want to have. I hope it doesn't resize the thing while I'm recording things. Well, it would be interesting, because you could change it on the fly, and I think it is possible by uh, changing some register values or something. Well, I didn't look into it just yet. But anyway, um, what you need to keep in mind with this is that what it selects includes the window decorations of this window that you have here. And if you look at it closely, the window decorations have uh, edges that are not, uh, well, that are rounded. And you don't want to have that because when you're recording, you are recording a square. Uh, so, I personally find this tool not very useful. Instead, I tried to find a better tool, and to be honest, I didn't find much that would be useful. I guess you could use some other recording programs, a uh, screen selection tool, and use the information from that. Perhaps there's another program, if you have something like that in mind for getting screen coordinates, 
and you could share it with me, I would be quite grateful and I would add that information to the description of this video. Uh, but for now, what I'm doing in order to find the exact coordinates if I want to record them is to use where is the mouse. Uh, you can find this program on Softpedia. Um, there we go. Uh, where is the mouse? 1.3. It's the last thing. It's freeware. Unfortunately, not open source, but oh well. It's a very simple program. You don't even need to install it. And what it does is uh, gives you the coordinates of your mouse as well as the coordinates of the window that you have selected. So, for example, if I select that window, it says window 00, zero which means the coordinates where it starts. So, that is very useful because you can use that in order to define a window. And then, uh, here are the coordinates of the window itself. So, 1280 on 720, like I have set up. If you resize this, you will have something different, as you can see. Um, yeah, the screen cords here show where your mouse is. There is also a color if you want to get that color for some reason. Um, now, if you are a perfectionist like I am, and you want everything to be neat and tidy, you want to make everything correctly aligned. So, for example, now I have this misaligned to uh, 1280 on 715. I would like to align it to 720 again. Now, I can drag this, but sometimes it gets a bit tedious to align things. And if you want to record, for example, without the window decorations, you will have to move your mouse exactly where you want it to be. And moving the mouse on just one axis is actually kind of difficult with the higher resolution displays that we have in our times. So I have also found an interesting way of uh, dealing with that. Now if you go to your control panel, then go to ease of access and uh, uh, change how your mouse works. That's a quote-unquote accessibility feature, although I have no idea how that makes it accessible. Set up mouse keys and click here, turn on mouse keys. Uh, what it does is it allows you to control your mouse by using your keypad. And you can see how useful that can be in our uh, position here. Make sure to set your pointer speed to low to accelerate and acceleration to slow in order to get the maximum precision. And then press apply and you will be able to control your mouse. So for example, if I have this set up somewhere, I can press here, then use my keypad to slowly but surely change what I have. Uh, note that you need to keep your mouse steady. I think there is another key that you can press that acts like the uh, left mouse button that would allow you this. So you can make this a bit easier. Right, so I want to set this up to 180 on 720. And perfect. Again, you can do that for your mouse only by not even clicking the mouse button. That will make it even a bit more easier. So this allows you to select the exact coordinates that you want. So that's that. With the coordinates known, you can then enter it into the uh, configuration screen. 
for screen capture recorder and also make sure to remember to turn off mouse keys again once you don't need it anymore so that you can use your keypad, keypad again and well that's that uh, that's how you set up FFmpeg to record on things. Once again, I have to urge you to look at the FFmpeg document documentation right here, where you can find a lot of information about how to use it, the description of the whole thing, how it's supposed to be working, different procedures, different options you can give to it, uh, generally, you might want to look things up on the internet about how to use a FFmpeg. Like I said, it's very powerful, very convenient if you can set it up correctly. Also, if you actually do set things up and you don't want to enter things repeatedly, you can set up a, a batch file to do things for you. For example, uh, record.cmd or dot bat, but cmd is that's record. Whatever. So you can do things like it. echo off and ffmpeg minus f show minus i video equals something something. Minus R30, uh, output dot MKV, and something, something, something. Then save this, and then every time you want to record, all you will have to do is double click on this file, and it will start recording automatically. You won't need to bother with the command line at all after that. So that makes things a lot easier. So that's all that I wanted to say right now. I hope this was useful for you. And I will possibly see you in other videos, perhaps some other tutorials. So see you all later.